Alrighty, welcome back. I'm working on the uh, Imperial Electric Dynamo again. It's come a long way since the last video. I think in that last video I was um, just making these uh, brush holder springs. Well, the brush holders are assembled now. Assembled on the Dynamo. The new brushes are installed and seated. They're starting to bed in with a little bit of uh, run time there. All of this wiring here is not permanent. Just temporary while I determine the correct connections and uh, verify that the the dynamo is going to operate properly before I invest more uh, more time and effort into mounting it on the Bessemer engine. A couple of reasons for uh, extending these wires out like this, mainly so that I can I could lay them out on a nice terminal strip like this and uh, determine the correct connections for everything. Also. The uh, the the lead out wires that original ins insulation there was uh, pretty decrepit uh, decrepit in some spots so uh, a little bit of heat shrink helped it down there I don't know if you can if you can see but kind of a safety thing so that's all set up now brought everything out the series field the shunt field uh, the inner poles and we've got here the uh, the uh, brush holders. So everything's out where I can get to it and test it and make take measurements. So it's all nice and secure. What I have up here is something I just I just put together today actually. Um, is just a, essentially it's a big uh, kind of uh, resistor bank if you would uh, if you will. Just using uh, light bulbs. And I, I find this to be uh, very convenient for uh, doing kind of work with these old uh, motors and generators. Uh, I find these bulbs are a very convenient way to uh, kind of mock up a, a resistance value. Uh, in this case, I'm trying to determine what kind of uh, field rheostat I'm going to need for the shunt field. And in order to do that, I'm just switching in and out different bulbs, bulbs of different wattages, which in, in reality they're just uh, they're different resistance values. So they're all they're all connected here in parallel. So as I bring different wattage bulbs online, the adding resistances um, actually decreases the the overall resistance, uh, which is then increases the field current which increases the output voltage so that's that little uh, setup which like I said uh, I find it works very well because you can pretty much get bulbs in any wattage and voltage imaginable so they're they're almost like little resistor modules that you can pull out and swap around and you know mix and match until you get the right um, uh, the right resistance So that's that. I've got uh, just a couple bulbs here set up for a load on the output. These are 300 watt lamps. I can only run about one lamp uh, primarily because my motor here, which I'm using to drive the dynamo, is only a half a horsepower. And I find that the RPM bogs down pretty significantly uh, with any more load than about 300 watts on it. So with that low, uh, that low load capability of only 300 watts, I, I don't find that the, the series field is actually doing anything at all. Um, what I'm seeing is that along with the, uh, with the voltage uh, dropping out, uh, about, from, from about 10, it's dropping about 10 volts from no load to 300 watt load. Uh, the RPM's dropping as well, so I think that might be my problem. But, well, enough talk. Let me uh, start this up and show you the the test uh, 
stand that I've got here. Let me open my meter up so it stands up like that. So all of the series resistant resistance is off. So the shunt field is completely open right now. When I start the uh, motor up here, what we'll see is only the residual magnetism uh, on the armature. Is good. A little bit of end play in the armature shaft. Just to take care of that. So this is no load and no excitation. Let's see what our speed is. We're shooting for about 17.30. Looks like we're just over 17, so I'd say we're about there. So I'm going to close the shunt field circuit by switching in this, uh, I think this is like a, it's a weird wattage, it's like a 69 watt or a 70 watt bulb. tone change in the dynamo here and our output voltage has gone up to 67, 68 volts. Let me bring a few more uh, bulbs on. Remember that the more lamps or the more bulbs that I switch in, the lower the field resistance, so the higher the output voltage. if I bring these other two 15s on. It's 
sitting right about 1700 now. They bring a 300 watt load on the output. Dropped pretty good there. 75 RPM there. Hmm. In reality, with the way this dynamo is uh, set up, we should have seen very little to no voltage drop of the uh, the series the, because the series winding but with the with the RPM drop we may just be losing the ability for the series winding to build the voltage back up we need more horsepower here this little motor can provide. It's a half horsepower uh, motor. Take the load off. And then we're back up. So, what was that up? Let's see, we got a 117 now. And yeah, dropping the 110, 109, so we're got almost a 10 volt drop with just a 300 watt load on it. Well, I guess that's enough for this video. Maybe I'll make a follow-up before, uh, before I take all this apart. I want to see about getting, getting a one horsepower motor for this. And with that one horsepower motor, we, should be, we shouldn't have any uh, any speed droop with that 300 watt load and see if the uh, the compounding works properly at that point switch her off here all right start her back up with the field connected That's all for now and thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one.